quarterfinal Saturday of the 2019 Ingle Southern Conference Basketball Championship presented by General Shale concludes the number three Furman Paladins, the six seeded Mercer Bears wrapping things up. One of these teams will join three others on semifinal Sunday, Bob Ritchie and the Paladins, Bob Hoffman and Mercer, a battle of Bobs in our final game of the night. Our bracket looks like this, presented as always by Ingles. Wofford taking care of VMI. The number 22 Terriers have won 18 in a row. ETSU and Chattanooga had a battle. So did Samford and UNCG earlier this evening on the bottom of the lower bracket. And now, Furman or Mercer will take on the Spartans on Sunday. Hi, everybody, and welcome back in. And here in Asheville, North Carolina, as you might expect, we've enjoyed quite a day of basketball. Now we're going to see a couple of ball clubs get together. One features one of the most complete big men of the conference, Furman, with Matt Rafferty, their senior, who's top five in the conference just about every key category. The other, a junior sharpshooter, Ross Cummings, leading the way for Mercer this year. He's really tough beyond the arc. He is, and a day that's been filled with stars. We see two more here in this game. Ross Cummings, a second team all Southern Conference selection, leads the Bears at 17 and a half points a game. He is a sharpshooter. He'll make it, he'll take it, and he'll do it a lot. You've got to find him if you're the Paladins. He can really, really shoot the basketball. For Furman, you talked about it. Matt Rafferty, he's the Swiss Army knife of the Southern Conference, does a little bit of everything. He ranks in the top five in seven offensive categories. There's a reason he was a consensus all-Southern Conference selection by the media and the coaches. Let's go courtside. Here's the third member of our crew, Stormy Bonatoni. Thanks, Pete. Mercer head coach Bob Hoffman had an interesting perspective to share with his players this week. Five teams left. He said, remember by the time that we step out on the court, the field has already been cut in half, and there are five teams we don't have to worry about. Hoffman told him, yeah. Furman had a better season than us, but fortunately, we don't have to play him for a season. We have to play him for 40 minutes. Go out there and do that. Why not us is the mantra, and it all starts right here, right now, with a very tough Paladins team. It's been a struggle this season for a Mercer Bears team that over the past few years was one of those that many thought could make a run to a SoCon regular season and tourney title. Lots of new faces or guys who were reserves now in starting roles. Furman winning the opening tip or underway in the fourth quarterfinal game. Rafferty likes to back in. Try to do that on Kilby. Into the corner and a three launched and knocked down. Point guard Alex Hunter distributes it well and hits 37% beyond the arc. Stair. That's a nice pull up jumper. He's been injured so much in his career, you really haven't seen all that before this season, but Stair has developed his game. No, he certainly has. I mean, he's a guy that can put points on the board. He is a terrific rebounder as well. Little zone action. Brown firing over it. And no surprise right there. Andrew Mount among the top three-point marksmen in the Southern Conference. You're right. There was a core of players that graduated last year. Stefan Jelks, Desmond Ringer, Jordan Strawberry, Rion Holland. Some really, really good players. Won a lot of games in Macon. Dimitri Rivers, a spin move there by Noah Gurley from Fayette County High in Georgia. And back out to a nine-point advantage, biggest that Furman has enjoyed in this opening half. And look, make no mistake, they prepared for Mercer the last couple of days, but it's about them and what they do and how they do it. Hard to believe it's been since 1980 that this Paladin program played in the NCAA tournament. Dimitri Ivich, and if he can make that a trend tonight, the Mercer Bears should make this a ball game. We deliver by delivering. Few coaches are more entertaining to watch during a game than Bob Hoffman of Mercer. As you see, he's trying to help out two of his players on the trap play. <laughs> and, you know, suffice it to say, Dean, Bob may be the clubhouse leader right now for our Geico play of the game. <laughs> I would concur. <laughs> Normally you say trap in a corner because you got two defenders and, and an, uh, the out of bounds uh, baseline and sideline, but Bob Hoffman adding himself to the mix, even with his hands up. Boy, great guy, great coach. Small college basketball legend in the Oklahoma City area. Yeah, you don't win over 600 games without knowing what you're doing. Bob Ritchie talking to his players just now, saying that the main thing I need from you guys is your expression. Your energy isn't there. We're playing better than them. We're winning. Don't let them have more energy than you. We're giving it to them. 
17 fouls on Mercer here in the opening half. Eight on the Furman Paladins. Trey Clark giving it to Lyons. Well, chances are Jordan Lyons isn't going to get his career high <laughs> in threes, maybe for the rest of his time at Furman, but he is a good three-point shooter. Remember, he had NCAA record-tying 15 makes in a ball game earlier this year. Th think about this. In that game, he had 54 points, and that's only the eighth best <laughs> scoring total in school history. Yeah. Just amazing. I guess when you go to the same school as a Frank Selby. Recently, the 65th anniversary of the Selby 100-point game on February 13th of 1954. Greenville Auditorium. First game on TV, on live TV, first Furman game ever, and maybe the first athletic event ever televised live in the upstate of South Carolina. And first game in college that Frank Selby's mom had ever been able to come down from Kentucky, Corbin, Kentucky, and watch her son play in person. And Picked a pretty good point. <laughs> So when she showed up the next time and he only scored 70, <laughs> she's like, wow, you, I guess you really weren't that good tonight. <laughs> so Furman playing for a final shot. I don't know if Brown was expecting it. Four seconds, three seconds. Rafferty, no. Rebound, and indeed, the Mercer Bears will head to the halftime locker room trailing, but in a game that, if you look at the record, looks quite lopsided despite the fact it's a three versus a six. You probably are feeling pretty good. And I think Bob Hoffman would have taken this halftime score had you told him before the game this would be the case. Bob Ritchie is with Stormy Bonatoni. Well, Coach, you led by as many as nine at one point, but when Mercer started to close that gap, what do you have to tell your players now to move out ahead again? Just relax. You know, I mean, it's, it's tournament basketball, and we just got to be a little. We got to be a little bit more poised. We got some un, we got some uncharacteristic turnovers. That's gotten them out in transition. We got to clean up the boards a little bit. We're playing fine offensively in terms of shooting the ball, but I think we got to take care of the ball a little bit more, and we got to we got to get a few more stops down here. I know you've stressed energy a lot. How would you assess that aspect of the game from your players? I thought it was pretty good. I thought they were, you know, when they start making their run, got a little bit timid, but we just got to keep keep playing through that. We got the lead right now. We're shooting the ball well. We got to go in here and clean a few things up and try to play better in the second half. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Furman is 20 and one this season when leading at the half. They're trying tonight for a program best 25th win all time. And they're 20 minutes away from joining the other three in the big four in the semi. Can be tougher to get a steal or even be credited for one. Stowe, a step through. Nice move by Jalen Stowe. He moves a scoring average over 10 points a game this season. Attacking the basket pulls Mercer back within two. Stowe was in a reserve role the last couple of years behind some of those talented Bears. Now, eight lead changes in the second half of the Paladins trying to assert themselves again. And Andrew Brown finishing on the reverse, a 10 2 Furman run. Paladins in this ball game have led by as many as nine. They've grown their advantage back out to seven. And Bob Hoffman will go ahead and use the timeout. Mercer Bears trying to snap a seven game skid in their series against Furman. If they do, they'll play on till Sunday here in Asheville. Still, they've been able to get other guys like Brown and Mounts and other contributors to add in. That's why they've been so good this year. That's how you go in and knock off Villanova in Philly. Brown, no. Rebound swatted back out to the Paladins. Lions, he is feeling it tonight. 22 points, now six out of 11 beyond the arc. That career high of 54 from earlier this season just might be in jeopardy if this continues. Again, he's one of those guys, when he sees it go through one time, boy, his confidence skyrockets. Red-shirted during the 16-17 season. Mike Bothwell, a freshman from Cleveland, gets his own rebound. He's quietly had a very nice Roll this year, about eight to ten minutes a game. How about that? Lions, he's got some points tonight. Give him an assist on the throwdown by Trey Clark. Big time plus minus. That speaks, though, to the greater good that Furman is an efficient team. Cummings losing it. Hunter. Well, we've seen showtime out of this guy. How about some more for the sophomore Trey Clark out of Palmetto, Florida? Or so it seems the final seconds in this game. Paladins will extend their lead in the series against Mercer to 16 to 9. We saw Stowe and Lyons with a hug at midcourt. 
And our final quarterfinal game now in the books here in Asheville, North Carolina. Furman wins 85 to 74. Matt Rafferty obviously hoping his wrist is not so bad that it impacts his performance tomorrow night. I don't think anyone for UNCG would want to see Rafferty impact as they get ready to take him on. They're ready to go at it. It will be the rubber game of their season series as the team split with the home team winning between UNCG and Furman this year. But for now, Bob Ritchie and crew savoring win number 25. Yeah, what a terrific day of basketball, you know, capped off here by Furman, particularly in the second half. Mercer gave everything they had in the first half, trailed by 339-36. And, and really, from the, from the opening ha second half, Furman's defense and then their ability to knock down open threes led by Jordan Lyons, and they just were able to pull away and never really be challenged. Join us tomorrow beginning at noon, and remember, turn those clocks ahead this evening. Mercer and Furman for the women's title. Then at 4 o'clock, we've got the semifinals in the SOCON. It'll be a battle of one versus four. Wofford and ETSU to start out at 4 p.m. UNCG the two seed against the third seeded Furman Paladins. For now, we say so long from Asheville, North Carolina. For Dean Keener and Stormy Bonatoni, Pete Yannity bidding you farewell. This has been a presentation of ESPN.